Hello, I'm Carly McAvoy, and today I'm talking about classifying angles in complementary and supplementary angles. Many of you will be familiar with this topic. It shouldn't take us too long. A right angle is an angle with 90 degrees. When you see the little box there, that means 90, so a lot of times they won't put the 90, and the 90 degrees is implied by the box. That box is right there at what we call the vertex, which is where the two sides of the angle meet. An acute angle has a measurement between 0 and 90 degrees, so that means it's less than 90. And below are some uh, examples of acute angles. You don't know what the value, or the measurement of an acute angle is unless it's given to you or unless you measure it because you can't tell by looking at something. It might go, oh, it looks about like half of 90, and it could be 47, it could be 42. But anytime you have an angle that is less than 90 degrees, we can say that it's an acute angle. And so all of these, 12, 67, 71, 48, 62, 54, those are all acute angles. We can also call an angle by its three letters, and if we do, we use this little angle symbol, and this is angle A, B, C. Whenever I call an, a an angle out, the vertex has to be the middle letter. So this could also be called C, B, A. That's the same angle. It doesn't matter which side you come from, but the B has to be in the middle. And then we have obtuse angles. Obtuse angles have a measurement between 90 and 180 degrees. Here are some examples of obtuse angles. Again, you cannot know the measure of an obtuse angle just by looking at it. You would have to measure it using a protractor or be given that measurement by somebody. These are all angles that are greater than 90 but less than 180. And so an obtuse angle in general is that some x where it's bigger than 90 and less than 180. That's what that means, that notation. x is greater than 90, x is less than 180. So if it, if it actually was 180, then we would be talking about a straight angle. A straight angle has a measurement of 180 degrees exactly. A straight angle is a straight line. A straight line like this is half of a circle. You can think about if this circle was here, 180 would get you there, right? And then you could go back around to that circle. So a, a straight angle is from here to here is half of a circle. And if you went back around, you'd get to 360 degrees. I think I can finish this same topic in this one video because we've only talked for a couple of minutes, so let's do that. Complementary angles. If, two, uh, if the measures of two angles add up to um, 90 degrees, then they're said to be complementary. A 40 degree angle is the complement of a 50 degree angle because 40 plus 50 equals 90. And here's a picture of that. If I had a 40 degree and a 50 degree, those two would form that right angle. Again, we assume a right angle when we see that box. Um, these, this is another example of complementary angles. And what about that? Well, for the second image, we could say that STA is the complement of ATR because the sum of the two angles is 90. 65 plus 25 is 90. So they don't show us the box, but we can add those up and tell that they are complementary. We use that term, is the complement of, a lot of times when we're working with complementary angles. Again, I named them by calling them this, and notice that the vertex is T, so the T is in the center as I name those. For the third image, we can see that one of the angles is 90, and we know the sum of the angles of a triangle is always 180. So these three angles have to equal 180. So we have this one that's 90. So if we take 180 and subtract 90, we know that the other two angles have to be 90. And that way we know the other two angles are complementary because they must add up to 90. 68 and 22 is, in fact, 90. All right, what if you were given, given something like this and asked to find a missing angle? Well, you can see in this case they put the little box in the vertex so we know that we're dealing with a right angle. So all we have to do is say, well, we know that that's 90. We subtract the 62 that we're given, and we get 28. So x has to be 28 degrees. What about if it just asks you to give the complement of a 15 degree angle? That's just another word to say the same thing. The complement of a 15 degree angle is the angle that would add to that to make 90. So to find the complement of an angle, we just subtract and that would be 75 
because 75 and 15 is 90. So the complement of a 15 degree angle is a 75 degree angle. And finally, um, name the complementary angles used in this uh, notation. We don't have to name them all, but just a couple. One of the complementary angle pairs I can see is CXF and then FXD, right? What's another pair? Well, maybe you can see there's several in here. I'm going to do the next one I see is CXB. Which one is that complementary to? Well, it's complementary to BXA because those two angles form a 90 degree. How do I know? Well, AD is a straight angle. And if this is 90 and this is 180 altogether, then this has to be 90 as well, right? And then I could do the same thing. This is a straight angle. So if that's 90, then this one's 90. And then again, if this is 90, then that's 90. And so once we know we have one of those being a 90 degree angle, they all are because of that complementary, because of the straight angle idea. So I could also do AXG and GXE. Those are complementary. I can't say that these two are because it, they don't, we aren't sure. BXA and AXG, eh, I can't really tell. They kind of look up, but we can't just guess that. We'd have to do some work and actually prove that. So these are not the only pairs, but those are typical pairs. Okay, let's do the last page of this, which is supplementary angles. Supplementary angles are two angles um, that add up to 180 degrees. They add up to be a straight angle. A um, 92 degree angle is a supplement of an 88 degree angle because 92 plus 88 is 180. Sometimes people get confused What's, which one is supplementary, which one is complementary. The way I remember it is alphabetically complementary comes before supplementary and 90 is before 180. So I always think of it that way to help myself remember which one is which. Here's a picture of two supplementary angles because 130 plus 50 would be 180. Find the missing angle here. We know that we have a sup we have a straight angle and we know that this is 77. So we would just take 180 minus 77 and that would give us 103 degrees. That's what y would have to be, right? Because it'd have to be 103 degrees to make that 180 happen. Find the supplement of a 112 degree angle. Well, all we have to do again, if they ask you to find the supplement of something is to subtract from 180, 180 minus 112. And we have eight and six, 68 degrees. 68 degrees is the supplement of a 112 degree angle. Finally, I have the same picture that we had below, above but find the supplementary angles in this picture. And I'll just do a couple of those. Again, there's no reason to do all of them, but let's say that I started with DXF. I have to put the X in the middle because that's the vertex. What angle is supplementary to this angle? DXF. Well, the angle that's supplementary to that would be FXA. Right? What if I told you that I want to find the supplement of AXE? Well, AXE is this 90 degree angle right here. So the supplement to that would be, could be two things. You might say AXC and it'd be supplementary here, or you could say EXD and it'd be supplementary there. Either one of those is true, right? AXE and EXD, but you could have AXE and AXC, all right? So there's more than that in there. There's, there's other supplementary angles, but I just want to point out how to do it and mostly just showing you how to write correct angle notation. It's always capital letters. Your vertex is always in the middle and you have the angle symbol at the beginning. All right, that's the end of that video, and we'll have a fantastic time next time.